Hello cell biology fans. I am providing this little flipped lecture on methods used to study proteins. That's my dog running around in the background. Um, and I'm sitting here in my PJs so together we can learn a little bit about uh, just one method we're going to talk about here and how to study proteins. Because so many proteins have been identified and studied we have a lot of information about the structure and function of a lot of different proteins. And as we've already talked about in class, from the amino acid sequence, we can use bioinformatics programs to look at secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures using algorithms that people have made based on all of the proteins that we already know. Now, one interesting thing is we can determine the molecular weight of every protein based on the chemical structure of that protein because every, um, what's the word I'm looking for, every atom has a particular molecular weight. Hydrogen's molecular weight is 1. Oxygen's molecular weight is 18. And so forth. And so we can look at the amino acid sequence and actually calculate the weight of every protein and that helps us because if we're looking for a particular protein and we can identify which proteins are available we might be able to say oh because that molecular weight is the same as the protein that I'm looking for that might be the protein you know that I'm I'm interested in looking at and I'll talk more about that every amino acid all right has a particular molecular weight and if you look at the overall 20 amino acids, the average molecular weight is 110 Daltons for each amino acid. So let's say you have a, a peptide that's 10 amino acids long. 10 times 110 would be uh, 1100 Daltons. Very simple, yes? Well, how do we look at proteins that are in cells? And one of the tools that we use are detergents. And detergents allow us to solubilize membranes. And that's a really important feature here. Solubilizing membranes means that we can take apart the phospholipid bilayers that every membrane has around them. And the reason that detergents can do this, if you look at the image here on the right hand side, you can see two different detergents, sodium dodecyl sulfate or SDS, and you'll see us talk about SDS quite a bit. SDS has a long tail, it's a hydrocarbon tail, and what does that look like? That looks like the hydrocarbon tails we find in phospholipids. Similarly, but not exactly, the detergent on the right hand side also has quite a bit of hydrocarbon it's interesting because it does have some polar residues, yes, um, and this repeats eight times, but it still has quite a bit of hydrocarbon uh, tails in it. And so both of these detergents are used to disrupt membranes, so we can break open membranes. Some of these detergents are charged, so down here you can see that SDS has a negative charge on it. All right, so it's called sodium because it's actually an ionic uh, detergent versus this Triton X100. It is a non-ionic detergent. SDS, very, very strong, very harsh, and it will break open all membranes, meaning it'll break open the plasma membrane, the early endosome, late endosome, lysosome, nuclear membrane, ER, all membranes will be solubilized. Whereas non-ionic detergents are a little more gentle and can be used to solubilize particular compartments. And that's a very useful tool for cell biologists. So how do detergents work? And this is just a you know little schematic diagram showing you here's a, a transmembrane protein in a membrane and the dark green portion of this transmembrane protein that I'm pointing to in blue, right, that has hydrophobic uh, amino acids and it wants to interact with the phospholipid tails of the phospholipids in the membrane. When you add detergents over here, they're showing you 
what a detergent looks like. It has uh, some some of them have head groups that are hydrophilic and the hydrophobic tails that let's just say we're talking about SDS here. So SDS has the hydrophilic head group, right, because it's got that negative charge on it, and then it's got the hydrophobic tails because of the hydrocarbon chains. When you add these kinds of detergents in to a cell right here, what happens is you can add so much detergent that the detergent will bind to the phospholipid tails on the right hand, bottom right hand side here, of the phospholipids, and it will also bind to the hydrophobic portion of the amino acids that might be the transmembrane domain. And together, what happens is that this allows for proteins to be removed from membranes, solubilized. So we solubilize proteins, solubilize meaning that this can now interact with water, right? And why can it interact with water? Because the heads on the SDS have that negative charge. That negative charge is really important. It allows for interaction with the partial positive and partial negative charges on, on the hydrogens in water, okay? And when you do this, the detergents actually end up being separated from the proteins. So this is a very, very important tool we use in cell biology. Here, what we're doing, doing the same exact thing, is isolating a protein from a membrane. And in this case, they've taken detergents, right? Here are our detergents. When detergents are together, they want to, in a solution, they want to protect their hydrocarbon tails, so they form these small micelles. You can very easily see this if you put, put detergent in water, shake it up. What you see are these little tiny bubbles, and those little tiny bubbles are the detergents, and they'll start aggregating together eventually. Well, when we add this detergent to a cell, it's going to solubilize all the different proteins. So, right, there's different proteins in, in the cell and the membrane, and it can be separated. All of these proteins can be separated from the phospholipids in the membrane. And we can purify them out, so we have, depending on this, they're trying to purify out just this pump, and we would have to use a number of different mechanisms to purify out this protein, but we can totally separate the two, the proteins from the non-proteins. And if we do additional separation steps and we just have the protein of interest here, this is a, a protein that we're going to then add back into our own membrane so we can buy membrane components. We can buy phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, sphingomyelin, and phosphatidylserine, and cholesterol, and we can make something called a vesicle, right? This is a vesicle, but we're making it in the lab, so it's called something different. Does anybody know? A liposome. And it's a liposome because it doesn't have all of the features of a normal cell. But we can put that protein in and we can then try to understand how it functions. So one of the mechanisms for determining if we actually have purified a protein out or not is SDS page electrophoresis. SDS is the detergent. PAGE stands for polyacrylamide. That's the PA, gel, and then E is redundant here, electrophoresis. So we're just doing the same thing. We take SDS, treat cells with SDS. Notice it'll coat the proteins. It'll also coat the um, phospholipids. But we can centrifuge the proteins out of the, of the solution. And then we add them to a gel, which is made up of this polyacrylamide. And the polyacrylamide allows for basically a lattice work, like a mesh, all right? And so this is a gel, and it has little holes in it that allow for proteins to migrate. So you can imagine if I have a big, long protein, it can go through here, right? It's going to be um, 
linearized and it has SDS all over it. I'm sorry I'm using the same color, that's bad. But as it's linearized, it can then go through this gel, right, based on size. So little things go through really fast and larger things take longer. And so we can separate proteins based on size and molecular weight. Here is a schematic showing the same thing over here. On the left-hand side, they're showing you proteins that have been solubilized from a membrane. They coat them in SDS, so they're completely got negative charge all over them, and they get loaded into gels. And these would lo be loaded, all right, into gels. And if you have noticed, there's, in this case, there's two proteins that are in the solution. In this one, there was just one protein. And when they're loaded into the gel, the big fragments, so the things that are bigger, stay higher up in the gel because the little things, shown in as A, migrate faster through the gel. So in this case, they're saying there's three different proteins, each of a different size. They're saying this protein here that I'm circling in blue is A. It's the smallest protein and it migrates the fastest. The second protein in that uh, left hand side is B and it's it's slightly larger and on the right hand side in lane number two right there's two lanes in this gel they have a protein that's intermediate in size C between A and B and on the right hand side you have a real gel and this gel is showing uh, a purification scheme of a protein from a cell and in lane number one that's total protein in a cell and you can see there's bands everywhere and each band is a protein of a different size so you have a lot of bands of a lot of different sizes and as they go through different purifications each purification step right removes a lot of proteins and the protein that they're interested in and they're trying to purify is this protein that's approximately 40,000 uh, Daltons. Okay, and you see by lane five they have a pretty pure protein. There are still some contaminants up here. I don't know if you can see them, they're very light, but this would be a way that we could purify a protein out and then use this protein in another assay like we had shown in that previous slide. So I want you to think about this. This might show up on an exam. If you have questions about it, come to me on Monday and talk about it in class. And I think that should do it. Have a great weekend.